When did you enlist in the Army? August 1944. Was it on your own well, or? No, I was going to be drafted, but I left. Okay. Did you do it by yourself, or with friends, or any family? I did it by myself. Um, why did you choose to enlist in the Army instead of the Marines or the Navy? No, no particular reason. You just wanted to? Did your um, family have any say in what uh, no, you were doing? Okay. Where were you first stationed when you went to Europe? When I went to Europe? Yeah, where There's were you no first stationed? There's no camps in Europe to station. I was, I was assigned to an infantry division. Which infantry? Third Infantry Division. As a replacement, that was a replacement. Did you go to any like boot camps or? Yes, I was. I trained for 17 weeks, Camp Croft, South Carolina. Could you tell us some of your experiences from that? Well, Camp Croft was, you know, that's a basic training camp, and you learn how to use. It was an infantry camp, so you learn how to use the weapons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rifles, machine guns, mortars, bazooka. More uh, hand grenades. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, memorable experiences from there? From the camp? Yeah. Camp? Mm -hmm. Well, you meet a lot of people that you, from all uh, walks of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, I, I met a, uh, he became a real good friend of mine from Kentucky. And when he, he never met a person of Italian extraction before. <laughs> wow. And guess what he told me? What? He says, you don't look any different than I do. <laughs> wow. Seriously. He was serious. Became my good friend. And guess what happened? I got it there. On the 15th of March, 1945, he got killed. Mm -hmm. oh. Sorry to hear that. He was killed in action. Can you tell how he was killed? He was, well, we were surrounded, and he was trying to take cover into a church. He, he just going into the church, and a shell hit the top of the, uh, the church door, and a piece of shrapnel got him in the head and killed him. Uh -huh. um. Do you know his name? Yeah, what was his name? His name was Douglas Paul Gibson. Was he He's from Hubbardsville, Kentucky. Was he the same rank as you all? No, we were privates. Oh. Mm -hmm. We were just infantrymen. Um, what country were you in most of the time when you were overseas in the war? Most of the time? Mm -hmm. France. France. But you did go to like Germany? Germany. I was in Germany a lot though. Any other countries? Or no. Just those well, England for f just a f few days. Do you have any um, memorable experiences in France? Just, well, I got wounded. I was in the hospital. Can you that tell about that? Yeah. How you got wounded and stuff? Yeah, we were crossing a, a canal on a footbridge, and as soon as we left, we, we crossed the canal. It was about midnight. Mm -hmm. You know, these uh, pontoon bridges. And we going into this village. We were, the village was already taken by the assault company, and they were, they needed help, so we were going in to help them. It was crossing the metal, and it came under fire from a, armored vehicle that got wounded. Mm -hmm. Now, did you... Um, I stayed a whole day after I was wounded, then the next day I went to the hospital. Okay. Then I was in the hospital almost four weeks. Really? And the hospital was in France? Yeah, Epinal, France. Okay. Did they give you good care in the hospital? The hospital excellent care. Um, did you ever come close in combat with anyone? Did you ever come close in combat with anyone? I mean, close in combat. Like? I captured prisoners. That's close. Can you tell about your capturing experience? My own? Mm hmm What do you mean by how I got captured? Yeah. yeah. We got surrounded, and then an armored vehicle pinned us into the cellar. And he, of course, we were lucky that he asked us to come out because when you're fighting armor, Infantry can't do too much against armor. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was it. We either gave up or he's going to fire his cannon at us. Mm -hmm. And if he, if he fired his cannon, I wouldn't be here right now. Was that the same time that your friend got uh, killed? Yeah, it was. Yeah, about the same mm -hmm. time. About 9 o'clock in the morning, it was. Really? You know, it was early in the morning, about 9. But we entered that village at midnight. We fought all night to take it. 
mm -hmm. and then we lost it. Were you in like constant danger all the time? And when you're in combat, you're always in constant, constant danger. danger. Where did they take you when you were captured? We went to most of the time we walked mm -hmm. in the countryside. We stayed in farms. So that's how and you the, got around and right. stuff. And the man that you interviewed, mm -hmm. that outfit eventually got us out. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. He could have been there, <laughs> as far as I know. Of course, you know, there's 15,000 men in the infantry division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So out of the 15,000 men, only 9,000 do the fighting. Mm -hmm. The rest are support troops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever rescue anybody from any danger? Not that I know. Of. No. Um, was it hard to get supplies to survive with? You mean as a prisoner? Yeah. Yeah. As a yeah. prisoner. Oh yeah. Did the uh, the um, don't forget this. You got to understand that this was at the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The guys that got captured at the beginning of the war, mm -hmm. they suffered a lot more. The Germans knew they were losing, so they changed their attitude. Mm -hmm. So I lucked out. Mm -hmm. They got us the bread every, every chance they could get the bread. There was always a few mean guys, but most of the guys were bad. Mm -hmm. There's always a couple that were yeah. kind of rough. But the head guy was fairly decent. Okay. Um. And the bread was terrible, because they were <laughs> eating the bread themselves, because they were running low on food. What um, do you remember most in France? All damage. Really? The buildings are all, just like the, when the hurricane hits. Mm -hmm. A lot of damage. And this is where in France? All over. All yeah. over? Especially where the battles were. Mm -hmm. What battles were you in in France? Any major Colmar ones? Colmar Pocket. Can you tell about that one? The Colmar Pocket was in the central part of France. Near the near the Rhine River, mm -hmm. and I was there as a replacement. That's where I got wounded, and uh, that battle lasted about a month. Really? Um, was that like a really? It, it was infantry, but yeah, there was a lot of close contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Was it hard to make friends in the war? No, or not with your own people. No, yeah. you always have friends. No. Guys are friendly. Yeah. So, I mean, it was mostly like you and a lot of the people in your infantry. You were all like friends. You were all like. In our squad, yeah. yeah we, were, squad. We, were, we were friends. Did you meet anyone interesting? In service? Mm hmm. Not overseas, but I did what I was stateside, I did. Mm hmm. I could tell you a story later on if you want to. You can, you can tell. Right now. Yeah. Tell when I came right back now. to the States, I was stationed in Fort Hood, California, mm -hmm. as a cadre man. The cadre man, I was there almost about 10 months. The cadre men are the permanent party of the camp. In other words, when you go to a camp, mm -hmm. people greet you there, they train you. That's the cadre, known as the permanent party. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I had a barracks that had taken. And we had, we were training. The troops that we received at Fort Ord were already had basic training. This was right after the war ended. And we were sending these troops to occupy Japan. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we gave them nine more days of training. That was on day one. Day one was abandoned ship <laughs> drills. Uh -huh. In case they were on a troop ship and the tro troop ship hit, even though the war was over, there was a lot of mines floating around. They were given instructions how to abandon the ship and use the lifeboats or the, the flotation gear, which are mostly life rafts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had mock-up ships where we they actually, they actually used the scramble nets. Then they, they had other tr training. The, nine, the other nine days was like uh, booby traps uh -huh. and uh, transition firing, which is... Uh, how to handle weapons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Crowd control. Okay. Um, did you have strong leaders to follow right. in the war? Right. Yeah, good leaders, I thought. 
Yeah. They're good. Can you tell like some experiences of how they led you guys strong? The best leaders we had were the the, the, one, the ones you make contact with is your own platoon leader, which is usually just a lieutenant. But our the captains we always had, I always thought were they knew what they were doing. Nobody's perfect, but they knew what they, they knew what they were doing. Did they were they the first person like out? Like were they the first person on the field? First people on the, the battle lieutenant? Field? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. Really? He's right there with you. Okay. You know what the highest rank is that f actually does the fighting? No. What is that? Lieutenant Colonel. Nobody above Lieutenant Colonel fights. Uh -huh. Lieutenant Colonel is a battalion commander. Mm -hmm. A captain is a company commander. Mm -hmm. A lieutenant is a platoon commander. So he was right out there with you guys? The platoon commander is the guy that is right with you. Mm -hmm. He's the officer in charge. There's also a sergeant in charge. Mm -hmm. You have the platoon commander, the commission officer is a second lieutenant or a first lieutenant. And the sergeant is the platoon sergeant. Then he has sergeants under him. For each squad has a sergeant. Okay. Who did you feel was the strongest leader? Did you know any of them personally? Yeah, Lieutenant Kroll. The pl mm -hmm. platoon leader, his name was Kroll. He was the, uh, the best leader I had. Do you have any memorable experiences with him? No, he's always, not really, but he, was, he knew what he was doing. Um. Um, I see you've received some medals after the war. Can you describe them and elaborate on them? The Purple Heart. I don't really know what these are. Oops. Gotta hook this up. Should I bring them over there? Huh? Yeah, just take them over here. One second. You also have some? Watch, watch TV, the, the interview with General. Mm -hmm. You ever see that? Um, could you pick it up, please? Yeah. It's a combat infantry badge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Infantry gets that. The medics had a badge called medical badge. Mm -hmm. This is the only one that pays you money. Really? You get $10. Every time you get paid, if you got this badge, you get $10 a month added to your pay. Wow. Well, the, Ribbons are supposed to be worn in sequence. You don't just slap them on. They're supposed to be. Now, some, some ribbons you earn, and some are what they call unit mm -hmm. decoration. See this, a 40 gear? This is given because we fought in the Comar pocket. Mm -hmm. The whole division wears this. This was not awarded to me. This is a divisional citation. Everybody in the division wears this cord. It was authorized to wear it. Combat badge you gotta earn. This is a bronze star. This bronze star is given was given to me later because of the Purple Heart. There's two bronze stars. This one here doesn't have the, the gold V on it. The gold V is valor. This was for service. This is the Purple Heart. This one here is a presidential unit citation. The whole unit gets that. Uh -huh. We got that for the Comar Pocket. Really, that must have been a big battle? Because mm -hmm. the way it turned out. Okay. This one here is good conduct. The red one. For good conduct. Okay. You gotta be good for one year, not for a day. You gotta have good conduct for 12 months. And if you're, <laughs> whoever in charge of you would recommend you for it, you get a good conduct now. This one here is the American Theater of Operations. Anybody that served in World War II to protect this country, this is for protecting the United States. This one here is the European Theater of Operations. You see these colors? Mm -hmm. See that? That's the German flag. Red, well, white, and blue, that's our flag. Okay. This flag here, the Italian flag, this is also for the Union Jack and the, the tricolors of France. So the flags are represented in that ribbon. Oh, okay. Yep, I see. Mm. This one here is the World War II Victory Medal. Then, about 25 years after I got out of service, I was given this. And I, I don't have I, I don't even know where it goes. <laughs> I have to find it because I don't have This is POW Medal.
What is that for? Oh, if you were a prisoner. Oh. 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 <laughs> wow. That was presented to him. You don't know where that goes on there? Not really. The sequence probably, I would say, either before the Purple Heart or after the Purple Heart. This is, I don't know. This sequence, I, I got it at the base. Mm -hmm. yeah, they got to be in proper sequence. Can you tell us some, about some of these? This is a 3rd Infantry Division shoulder patch. Mm -hmm. This is a, these are stripes. This is a corporal stripe. Mm -hmm. Corporal is the lowest non-commissioned rank in the Army. <laughs> really? Yeah. <coughs> but, he's, but he's still a non-commissioned officer. Mm -hmm. Corporals and sergeant are non commissioned. And they go over a sergeant is commissioned, just mm -hmm. like a lieutenant, he's a commissioned officer. Mm -hmm. So a sergeant is a non commissioned officer. But if you got men and you got that on your helmet, uh -huh. you can give orders. Wow. So that's that's what important. this means. Yeah. Can you tell us how you wore two helmets? Yeah, you wear two, everybody wears two helmets. This is the liner. So, see the webbing? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the steel jacket slides right over the top and hooks right in. Wow. So, the, most people don't know that in World War II, we all wore two helmets. <laughs> wow. Can you talk about these? Right here? These are dog tags. When you get killed, this one goes into the skull. Mm -hmm. And this one here. The board department does, I don't know if they hook it to you. But this goes with the body. And these here, we all carry these. These are cane openers for the rations that came with the rations. You can open up your... Yeah, I love the can. Or, but they, these yeah. were all over the place. Anytime you open up a crate of rations, they had cane openers in them. You'd be surprised how this thing works. <laughs> wow. Good. And this here is just a memento. Some guy gave it to me and we, mm -hmm. there's three of oh. us. We. We were supposed to get together after, we never did. Mm -hmm. This is a 45 caliber. Can you tell us a little about the guns and the, ma the machinery back then? Yeah. We had the best rifle that ever was made, the best rifle in the world. Mm -hmm. That's my own opinion. The M1 Grand. It fired eight shots, but it was heavy. But it was accurate and it had distance. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have distance. The Thompson is just good for the movies, but it only goes 50 yards tops. Wow. Where the M1, six, seven hundred yards. But the best rifle was, for my, uh, was the World War One rifle, what they call the O3, the bolt action. That was real accurate. Wow. Fire 600 yards. You can hit a person at 600 yards away. Wow. It's a long ways away. It's a long ways away. Can you tell us about um? how there were people in the platoon who had different jobs and what they oh, yeah. did? A platoon, a rifle platoon, is made up of three squads. Each squad has a sergeant that leads the squad, mm -hmm. and then at the tail end there's an assistant squad leader. That's two people. Seven riflemen, M1 rifles. Then you have what they call an automatic fire team. So it has a Browning automatic rifle. I don't know if you know what a Browning's got. It. The Browning is a, it's a rifle, but it fires like a machine gun. It's got a big magazine, mm -hmm. 20 rounds. And he has two guys that carry ammunition because that thing burns up ammo so fast. He has to have help. Mm -hmm. So there's 12 men in a squad. If, if everybody's present, you've got 12 men. You've got two sergeants, seven riflemen. Then in the platoon, you have the platoon sergeant, the lieutenant is in charge of the platoon, and a medic that comes with you. Each platoon, as far as I know, I don't understand that, we had a, a corpsman that came with us all the time. Okay. Can I ask one question? If you notice, when you read the war now that once in a while the Marines, a sailor is killed, have you noticed that at all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? No. He said, how does a sailor get killed with the Marines? The Marines don't have a medical corps. The sailor is their medic. Wow. 
So when you read the report, see the reports at night, you say, Navy man killed with the Marines. Say, what the heck was he doing there? He was their medic. The Navy is the medical corps for the Marines. Um, when you were in the war, did you have a lot of chances to write your family? Yeah, you get a chance to write. How did you write you have them? They what they call the, you said these little V-mails. Mm -hmm. You just write it and it folded it into an envelope and you mailed it. So did someone come around like once a week and pick yeah, up the mail? Yeah, supply and... sergeant. Okay. Usually the oldest guy, the, the guy that takes care of our jackets and our equipment, he's called a supply sergeant. Mm -hmm. He usually has a he has a truck and he he handles like the blankets that we we need extra and gets awful cold at night. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. He handles the supplies and he also he has a helper that handles the rations. Um, so in the war and all, what did this mean to you and like your conclusion for it? Pretty good. Um. Yeah. Um, what did all this mean to you? What does it mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. the war. Huh. It has different meanings for different people. Mm -hmm. Hitler was a thing. He had some bad people at that time. <laughs> yeah. You know, you do. Your country calls. Mm -hmm. The Congress says you got to go, you go. Congress is the only one that has the right to declare war. Mm -hmm. You know that? Yeah. Because they're the ones that have to pay for it. They're the ones that have to collect the money to pay for it. Yep. Do you want to wrap this up? Or? Yeah. Um, do you have any more memories that you'd like to share with us? Or anything that means a lot to you from the war? Well, some of it was good. Like, when I went overseas, I went overseas on the Queen Elizabeth. That was something. Right. <laughs> um. the, British, the British did most of the transporting. Guess how many GIs were aboard the Queen Elizabeth? Eighteen thousand. Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot of people. Like sardines. The fact <laughs> is, it was, the ship was so heavy that it was divided into three parts. You were not allowed to leave your section. There was the red, white, and blue section. I was at the faint tail. Faint tail means it up back end of the. Okay. That was an experience. Just the ship alone. And it only took four days to get there. Wow. Four days and five nights, something like that. It's a long time. Yeah. You want to write this out? Yeah. Well, um, thank you yeah. for this interview. Thanks. I think we're all set. All set? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Pops. How long was it? Um, Can you tell? About 20 minutes. That's it?